what's up everyone it's nick atkin on the south china morning post and uh, i've got hong kong's own ramona pasquale here over in las vegas i'm very happy to see you again ramona how are you doing i'm doing well thanks nick um just uh, entering the home stretch now i'm about uh, just over a week out uh and it's yeah exciting just uh trying to finish strong and uh let the fun part begin Yes, that's why we're here. You are fighting uh, Victor 45 uh, against Courtney King. As you said, the home stretch, we are here. You've been out for about seven months now um, after that uh, win over Guadalupe Guzman um, in Mexico, an icon fighting Federation 7. Uh, how's it been? To, yeah, about seven months, you know, any, any um, concerns going in? Would you have liked to have been a bit more active or has the time been perfect for you? Uh, yeah, I would have liked to be have been more active. Uh, <laughs> at the time I fought, uh, Icon was supposed to have a show uh, four weeks after that, and I was going to do you know this back to back kind of situ this situ fight situation. Um, and they were keen to have me on board, and they were supposed to do a show in Vegas, and I was really excited for that. You know, kind of get to bang out two in a row uh, within a month period, but that fell through, and then you know, trying to look for other things. And then I fell ill and then, you know, had to deal with an injury. Um, and it was supposed to go on in October and that fell through because of opponents and then uh, try to set something up for December. It didn't work out. So now we're here <laughs> in January. So uh, yeah, I feel like I've been in fight camp for a really long time, pretty much uh, <laughs> right after that last fight, um, you know, only taking time off because of, you know, colds or like uh, injury and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm just ready to get back in there. And I did want to be active last year and that kind of sucked that I wasn't, but I did get a lot of training time, a lot of work with a lot of different girls, high level girls coming through the gym. So um, yeah, I'm better than I was, you know, seven months ago and uh, I'm re ready to, to show that off. Have you had a bit of a feeling of deja vu because I know that, you know, you had the two years off for the injury uh, in Hong Kong and then, you know, everything happened with the UFC Performance Institute. You had the big comeback and then COVID happened. You had a year off there and then you moved to Vegas to be more active. And then this happening now, a little bit frustrating, I guess. Um, a little bit. I think just compared to those previous circumstances, just a fraction of just because, uh, gyms are still open like i've had the most consistency out here that i ever have anywhere else you know because in the past i'd always been traveling to and from korea phuket shanghai um and you know needing to get visas and you know not needing not being able to be there for uh, long periods of time and uh sort of travel restrictions and whatnot but being here you know i was still able to f train fully still have full access to the pi still have you know, access to, you know, there just were, haven't been restrictions like once they were lifted and I think April, and that was about the time I moved over. So there's been a good level of consistency, you know, and even though fight opportunities have not worked out during that time, uh, still able to get a lot of really good work in and uh, make a lot of big improvements. So I would say slightly frustrating, but, you know, kind of just needing to trust the process and, um, yeah, here we are in January and I'm going to be able to do what I want to do. Yeah, all right. Yes, Courtney King, um, last time we saw her, <laughs> she was against uh, Kayla Harrison, no less, I think, in uh, in that fight. And you know, what did you see in that fight? I'm sure you've been watching it to kind of see what you need to do there. I think Kayla got a second round finish. Um, are, you, are you confident having seen this? Yeah, um, I that, that fight showed me that uh, Courtney King is very tough. You know, she's very durable. She's going to stay in there. She's not going to be intimidated, you know, by a bigger opponent, by, um, uh, a more heavily, you know, uh, touted opponent, uh, and a lot of respect for her. And I think, uh, it's not really going to be a quick one. You know, it's going to be one of those where she's going to stand, she's going to bang, she's going to want to keep going. Uh, she's not going to fall easily. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I'm really excited to get to fight her because she is a veteran. Uh, she's been in the sport a long time, a lot longer than I have. I would say she's probably one of the, one of the more experienced fighters that I've ever fought. 
So that's really exciting for me to use her as a measuring stick to see where I'm at. Um, yeah, and you know, she's had a long layoff. No doubt she's had the opportunity to adjust herself and hone, hone her skills. So uh, I'm expecting you know, the best version of Courtney King to show up and uh, it'll be entertaining for sure. Yeah, she has a, a win over Colby Northcutt, her name, now in one championship. Um, uh, a couple of wins in Victor as well. So definitely should be a good test. Uh, did you think now is the time, yeah, for a step up in competition to see where you're really at after the last couple of fights? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, she's well-rounded. Um, she's been in the game a long time. Uh, but I'm also super confident in my skills in my development over the past year. And, uh, I've been able to work on a lot of different transitional areas of MMA and, uh, become more well-rounded myself. So I'm really excited to be able to test myself. Uh, and I know that I have a good chance. Um, I'm probably the underdog going into this fight. I'm not exactly sure, but I would assume so. And, uh, that's a good place to be. I have a lot to prove and uh, I'm really excited to be able to do that. What does it mean to you to be uh, fighting on, you know, this card for, for such an esteemed promotion like Invicta? Um, you know, it's the next step in your evolution, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, I've been following Invicta for a very long time. Uh, as soon as they came up in the scene as an all-female organization, uh, giving so many girls the opportunity to come up and then being a feeder organization to the UFC as well. Uh, them having that uh, uh, relationship with bigger promotions. Uh, it means a lot. It'll be the biggest promotion I fought in thus far. So a big step in my career. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the subsequent steps that'll come uh, after. So, uh, yeah, it's it's always been a dream of mine to fight for Invicta. So I'm really excited to be able to do that. Yeah, I know your big dream, and you alluded it to the alluded to it there. Sorry, is still the UFC. That's why you you moved your life across the world. Um, is this a multi fight deal with Invicta? Can you shed any more light on that, or what are you looking to do here? Uh, it's a single fight deal, you know, because um, then they kind of kind of get to see and test the waters with me as well, without you know needing to make a big commitment. So it'll it'll be a good opportunity for me to to get my foot in the door and really make a splash. Yeah. Are you, are you open to fighting again there and uh, continuing making a splash if all things go well? Potentially, you know, we'll, we'll see what comes up. We'll see how this goes. We'll see, uh, you know, there's so many different factors outside of my control. Um, but all I can say is, you know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to give him my best shot. I'm not going to leave anything left in the tank. Um, and I'm going to go for broke. I mean, that is correct, right? The dream is still the UFC. I haven't got that wrong, have I? Yeah, that's, that is correct. That is still <laughs> the dream. <laughs> yeah. And uh, have you, have, do you put a kind of mental timestamp on it? Like I want to be, you know, after New Year's Eve, did you say, this is my resolution 2022, I'm going to make it to the octagon? I need, I feel like that's every year, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's always sort of the, uh, the moving target, the moving target, given the circumstances. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's like the end all be all, you know, um, I'm just going to go with the flow, see what comes up. I know that uh, I'll, I'll be able to put on a good enough performance to, you know, attract the attention of big promotions. Um, you know, definitely would love to fight for the UFC. Um, if I, whatever reason wasn't able to, I'm not going to be completely heartbroken and destroyed, you know, but uh it's always the focus of the process. It's always me enjoying what I'm doing, enjoying the people that I'm around, enjoying the training and, and the lifestyle. Um, and I'm pretty confident that's going to get me there. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't really have to worry about the end goal and all my effort into what I'm doing and uh, enjoying it and uh, trusting people around me. I know we've we've seen um, a few of the fighters from the Shanghai Performance Institute where you used to train as part of the UFC China Academy. They got their chance um, to earn UFC <laughs> contracts on Dana White's Contender Series. I mean, it didn't go very well. I think only one of the six on the Contender Series got the contract. But um, is is that an avenue you're also uh, thinking of taking if, if that opportunity came up to, to get to the UFC through the Contender Series? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely a potential. I think it's possible. Um, I don't know when the next season is. I don't know if it's it's all the way in the summertime 
or if they are going to be pushing it forward. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely a possibility of an avenue that I would take. Yeah. And I, I imagine you were watching closely. Yeah, I'm sure you knew a lot of the, the guys and girls on, on the contender series. Um, what were your emotions like seeing them fight for those contracts? And there were some very good performances, some really narrow things didn't go their way, but um, were, were you yeah. proud to see them put in the effort? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of those fights were so close yeah. and, you know, you could argue, um, it was, uh, yeah, it was bad decisions, but, um, you know, that's kind of part of the sport. I haven't spent a lot of time with them in Shanghai. Your heart really goes out to them. You know, you're sitting there like at the edge of your seat being like, you know, really hoping that they get it. Um, and then you're just sort of reminded of, you know, the highs and lows of the sport. So it, it's a good, it's a humbling experience for sure to like see people that you know, go through that as well. Yeah. And um, are you confident that, you know, if, if they returned next season on Dana White's Contender Series, you know, there might be a few more contracts for the uh, UFC China Academy. Yeah, I think so. I think it's also difficult to come all the way here. Um, yeah. There a lot of people, a lot of them have, hadn't left, have never left China as well. So, or maybe have left one time, um, you know, the culture shock, the, the jet lag, the different time zones, the new environment, like Vegas is very dry, you know, it's a desert. So <laughs> the climate's quite different. Everything is quite different, honestly. Um, not saying it's a good excuse, but uh, it's tough. You know, they were, I think we were supposed to have the Asia contender series in China and then so many plans kind of just changed. And, um, but uh, yeah, going off on a tangent on that one, but yeah. I, uh, I, I, it would be awesome to be able to fight in the, in the contender series. If, if, if that's the avenue, it, it would also be awesome if I got to, you know, go head right into the UFC. I know that, uh, they're always looking to fill their 35 division. Um, and I would like to uh, put myself forward for that. Yeah. I mean, I'll get to the, the 35 division. I mean, I just wanted to ask you the tangent you did say, yeah. I mean, the Asia contender series, I, I mean, I, I had heard things about it and, you know, I'm not sure how much you can read either, but it, it looked like it was all going to happen. And then it very suddenly was not going to happen, wasn't it? Because of the pandemic. I mean, th that was a huge blow, wasn't it? I mean, would you like to see that come back? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you, uh, you can't really predict travel restrictions and, you know, the international borders and things like that. Um, and China is on a very tight lockdown at the moment. So, you know, having anyone come in um, doesn't look likely in the near future. But uh, yeah, you know, they had big plans. Obviously the PI was, you know, was, was built. And then we had big plans going into with the Academy started 2019, 2020. We're supposed to have a few different contender series shows highlighting the fighters in Asia, not just China. Um, so that fell through. Um, but uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the plans are with that. If it's going to happen in China, if it's going to happen in another country in Asia. And, uh, you know, a lot of logistical planning obviously has to go into that. Yeah. And and you mentioned as well, so it's back on the 135 pound division UFC. It's pretty interesting right now, isn't it? <laughs> a little shake up, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you feel now is the time for people to kind of stake their claim and for uh, new women to come forward and, and show what they're made of in that division? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's exciting now. Like I think for a while, uh, Nunez was on top and everyone was like, oh, you know, it's the same person over and over again. And now that Pena is shaking up the division, you know, got up there, got that belt. Um, I was there actually for that fight, watching it live. And it was uh, <laughs> definitely extremely impactful. I was going off my face, just going <laughs> so crazy in the stands. Um it's an exciting time, you know, no doubt Nunez is going to get, you know, it's going to be hungrier than ever, you know, want to come back, take that belt back in the rematch. That's, you know, I have no doubt it's going to happen, but, um, it's, uh, it also, you know, allows all the other fighters to kind of see that, like, look, there's, there are opportunities here. Um, this is for the taking, you know, you just have to go in there, commit the time and go get it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think now with the 25 division opening up and like a few 35ers dropping down to 25, um, I think they're they're probably looking for more 35ers because there's also like a lot more 25 female fights on cards in a, on a consistent basis than there are 35. 
Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, I, I, I've got nothing else to ask. Thanks for <laughs> Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, always good to catch up. And um, yeah. yeah, we hopefully will catch up with you after the fight as well. Um, okay. Yeah, Victor, sounds good. I'll wake up to a sweet knockout from Ramona uh, on the time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Leave it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, appreciate it. And um, definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll try and speak to you again after the fight. Thanks so much, Ramona. Sounds good. Appreciate it.